Hello, it's Carla from Scrap and Create, and I wanted to come on to show you how I'm making a shaker card for the album. I, I'm planning on using this, make this into a shaker piece, and put it on the cover of the album. Um, and before I get too far, I want to show you what I'm doing. So first, I just get a piece of, this is 110-pound cardstock black cardstock. Kind of figure out the size that I want of the the window and it's going to be a just a tad smaller than the size of this card. I trace it out and then I draw my lines and then I want my frame size to be about three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to have a three-eighths of an inch frame around it. So I draw all my lines. I use a quilter's ruler to draw my 3 8 of an inch line. It's so easy to, to find your 3 8 and I, I'm going to do that all the way around. And then you just use, oops, you use your X-Acto knife. And what I do too, so I'm going to be cutting out the window. I put little holes with my um, hole, little hole puncher thing. Pokey tool. That's a pokey tool. That way I know I won't overcut it. So, and I just put it in, get your exacto knife. You can fill that little hole from the pokey tool, cut down, and then you just fill it when you get to the next hole. So you're going to do that all the way around. Same thing, cut out your frame and you're gonna come up with something like this. So here it is cut out. So this is what I'm going to be using that's going to be going around this. Like that. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm that, let me get rid of this. Retract this. So what I want to do, this is going to be the base. This is where we're going to be adding our little beads and sequins. I want to build up the bottom of this base. And what I do is I cut out strips from black cardstock a little less than this um, 3 8 of an inch width and I make it the entire length of the frame and I'm going to cut out seven pieces this is all 110 pound cardstock and I glue them together so you get I'm not sure why this isn't focusing but you get this width so this is the width Then what I'm going to do is put, get rid of this. I'm going to adhere this down on one side. So that's got seven layers of black cardstock. And then this one, same thing, has seven layers of black cardstock. And here are the end pieces. I haven't glued them together yet. So I measured the distance between this and this, and I cut out seven of these for each side. And then I'm just going to use my art glitter glue, get glue them all together, and then I, I'll be attaching these. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and glue all these together and then attach it, and I'll be right back. The other thing... Um, just to note, when you're gluing these down, you want one side to always be the, the more even side. So this is my more, more even side down here. So what I do is I line it up end to end and then push it down so this side is 
basically even because this is going to be facing the inside. So that's what I do. So I glued one edge in. Um, if you can see that, if it focuses. So this side is down. So there's the seven layers on top of the frame. And then I'm going to be adhering this piece next, butting it right up there. You don't want any gaps because the sequence, the little things you put in here, the shaker bits are going, you don't want them to leak out. So I'm gonna glue this one down next. So once these two pieces are in, then I'm going to get this long edge to, and butt it right against this edge. And if you need to trim off just a little bit, you can on the top or bottom, but mine's pretty good. So I'm going to glue this, this one in. Make sure you, you find your smooth side so that's facing the inside. Here's my smooth side. Not that you can tell, it's so dark, but there's my smooth side. So push that in, put it up to that, and get it straight. Make sure it's straight. Yes, so it's straight. And then just have to fit this last one in there. And what I'm going to do, I don't, this is fine, um, but those bridge point, those little joints right there, you can barely see them. Can't, probably can't even see it. I want to make it smooth, so I just cut out a little strip that I'm going to put over there so these two joints where they connected that is all smooth. I'm going to do that here and down here and at the bottom too. That's it, and then it'll be ready. There, so I covered up those two intersections of the joints, and this is 65 pound cardstock, so it doesn't add extra bulk. So I like that. Now everything is smooth on this side this side is smooth because this is the one we originally cut out. So I like that. We've got our thickness here. Let's see if you can see how thick that is. Right there. So now we're going to be adhering this onto our little um, image. So we're going to be adhering it down like this. I like to turn it over. And what's a, sh a shame with Stamperia? Look at this image. That is a beautiful image too, but I only have one, so I have to not use this. Um, I wish they would have an extra sheet. The cutouts, the cut aparts, I wish they would have two sheets of the cut aparts because the images on both sides are so beautiful, but I can't use them both. I only have one image, so. Stamperia, if you're ever listening, for your cut-aparts, make two, two sheets of the cut-aparts so we can use both of these beautiful images. It's a shame. I love this guy, but I love this one too. Ah. Now, I was trying to construct a frame to go around this whole thing. Um, I tried to cut it out the normal way by using my X-Acto knife and I could not satisfy satisfy what I wanted to do. So I used a die that is not the perfect size. I don't have dies. It, it would be so nice if I had a nesting die that would cut out this whole thing. So I used a die that's not perfect. Um, and this is what I am going to come up with. So it kind of fits pretty good. 
but it does cut out part of her wing. Um, and you have to keep this little saying intact. So not completely happy with this die, but like I said, I tried to cut it out multiple times on my own and I could not do a good job. And this does fit over this part, so it does um, cover it, so that's a good size. So if you have dies that can cut this out, it's so much easier. So I am going to do this, and so I'm going to use the same die, and I'm going to use this to make a little frame around the die, this paper. This is from the 12 by 12. It, this is the back side. This is the front side. And I just cut a piece from this, uh, this right upper hand corner right there. So I'm gonna put it in my die machine and then uh, mark my edges around, around it so I have it a little less than, this turns out to be a half an inch so it's going to be a little bit less than a half an inch once I cut it out. So let me put this through the dye machine and, and see what we come up with. So I die cut this frame out. Now when I put it on my grid here, move this out of the way, What it has right now is about a half an inch border, and I want it like 1 16th less than that. I just want a little bit trimmed off. So I'm going to just lay it down on my grid, make sure it's all lined up. There's the half an inch. I'm just gonna go in inside that half an inch mark and cut the designer paper and see if that will be okay. There's got to be an easier way to do this. <laughs> okay, so let's see what that looks like on our black frame. Where is my, here's my black frame. So it's going to be something like, I'll get that lined up, like that. So I think that's going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around it, that little bit less than a half an inch, and see what I come up with. Okay, so I made I made my frame. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I think it looks nice. So what I've already done, I adhered my picture, this this picture to the this this built up um, frame that we made. With the seven layers, I adhered it to the back of this card, so the card is attached to it. And then I kind of put some um, of these guys in there. Just a collection. Oh, I don't want that one. Tried. I had a bunch from Christmas. I tried to take out all the Christmassy stuff. And so that's what I put in there. It might not, might be too much, might not be enough. I never know. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put this aside. Got that ready. I'm going to add the acetate. Now, acetate you have to adhere with tape. Glue will not do. It will come apart. So I'm going to go ahead and put tape all around this, my score tape. I might cut this down just a little bit so I have room for my score tape. 
So I'll be right back once I get the score tape on this. Just another thing, since you're applying acetate and you don't want anything to come out, what I do is I apply score tape and then lift it this part up so I can apply my next section of score tape to go over these parts. That way you know the acetate is completely sealed and there's nothing going to be leaking out of it. You, you have to lift the score tape to apply the second layer of score tape and then you can put this down. So I have my acetate in. What you will know with acetate and all these little sequins and stuff is there's a lot of static. Now I have th this anti-static bag, which I can rub on it. It usually doesn't do much. It's just filled with powder. And then I have this anti-static powder also that I can kind of go around the edges here. And just put a little layer on there. It smells like baby powder. It's probably what it is, and you could probably use baby powder. I know some people have tried dryer sheets too. Dryer sheets just kind of left a little film for me, but that's an option. So let's bring this over. And there's still some static there, as you can see, but that'll, that'll get better once we get it shaking. Oh, I see a snowflake in there. Need to take it out. Let's see. I want to see how much I have. I don't want a lot. I just want to make sure there's some movement in there. And I think that's going to be good. So you can see the static. Look what's adhered to it. Now, um, I'm just going to fish around. I saw some snowflakes in there. I don't want snowflakes in there. So I'm going to take those out. And then I'm going to adhere this down. I already have my double-sided tape around here. I'm going to here adhere that down. One last thing with the shaker card. I'm going to go ahead and add a back panel to this. Just cut it to size. And just going to add that just to make everything nice and firm. I just think that is so pretty. Okay, so I got the frame down, and there's the shaker card. I just see with the glare, but there it is. I didn't put, I probably could have put more stuff in there, but I just want to add a little sparkle. That was all I wanted. So, there you can see it. And when you're doing these shaker cards, it's the little flat ones that get stuck more so than the round ones. And you want to have those little tiny seed beads in there to roll. They help keep help things roll in there. But that's it. I think that came out real pretty. It was t very time consuming, but if you have dies um, that will work for you, it'll be much easier. So that's it for the shaker card.